just good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Take a minute and just take a deep breath and look up. And just take in for a second where you are and what you're seeing because it is the best symbol of resurrection, redemption, resilience, of building the city not back the way she was, but the way she should have always been, and the best symbol of what the 300th anniversary of the city of New Orleans is gonna look like. And I just came back, I just came back from New York and Washington, D.C., and I can tell you without fear of contradiction that this is the most beautiful sit um, theater in the United States of America. And I'm not talking about all of you for I walked by the Schubert Theater. I walked by Shakespeare in the Park. I walked up and down all the theater houses in Broadway when I was in Washington, D.C. I walked by the Kennedy Center, the Ford Theater. I drove by the Arena Theater. There is no nicer theater in the United States of America than this one. And all of you have had something to do with putting this together. And it is a wonderful gift to the history of the city of New Orleans and to the future of the city of New Orleans. So I want to begin by um, welcoming all my fellow council members uh, who have been great partners and are with us today. I want to welcome Christy Nichols, who is representing Governor Jindal. Uh, it's a commission of administration for the state of Louisiana. Christy, thank you. Uh, David Anderson, who's the president and CEO of Ace Theatrical Group. David, thank you uh, for the work that your team has done, and I really appreciate the partnership that we've been able to develop. Lauren Reed, who's the president of Broadway Across America, thank you so much. It's great to have you with us today. We have David Rubenstein with us, who is the chair of the Canal Street Development Corporation, and we have members of the board. Thank you all for all of the work that you have done, as well as the past board members, who have worked so hard over the years because it took many, many people uh, to get this done. We have legislators who are with us today. Um, if all of you guys would stand up so everybody can see you and welcome you here. Thank you so much uh, for being with us. We have a number of deputy mayors that are with us uh, today. Uh, I thank you all for the work, especially Deputy Mayor Cedric Grant and his team. He's a deputy mayor for infrastructure. Thank you all for being with us today. I particularly want to thank Ms. Cindy Connick, who has been working on this for a very, very long time. Remain standing, just for a minute. Um, success has uh, many folks that made it happen, but some people are completely indispensable. And I can assure you, of all the people that did all the great work, and there are many who deserve credit, there is an indispensable person throughout this whole process, and that has been Cindy Connick. So Cindy, thank you. And of course, um, we all stand on the shoulders of so many people that helped us get where they got. And I would not be here without my mother and my father, and maybe the greatest man that the city has ever had, at least up to this time. <laughs> I can assure you that the Landers are competitive, but I'm, those are shoes that will never be filled, for the record. In any event, I, this is just a spectacular moment for all of us in so many Ways. It brings back so many memories of our childhood. It brings reminiscences of the time when the city of New Orleans was really punching way behind its weight a long, long time ago. Um, it brings back the thoughts of the possibilities of what it looks like when we are at our best. And when we are at our best, we're the best that this country has to offer. This is a historic landmark for so many reasons, not only physically, but as I said, soulfully and spiritually. This theater was built in 1927. It is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Eight years ago, this theater, like everything else in our lives, got knocked to its knees. Uh, and one of the things that we all did collectively together is we decided that we were not gonna let it go. We also decided we weren't gonna build it back like it was. We also decided collectively that we were going to create partnerships between the federal government, the state government, local, private sector, not-for-profit, faith-based community to dare to make it as good as it always would have been. Because I have said many, many times, and I know that all of you agree with this, 
that we don't want to be Atlanta. We don't want to be Houston. We don't want to be New York. We don't want to be Washington, D.C. We don't want to be San Francisco. We want to be more like the authentic New Orleans because when we're at our best, we are the best. And this is a representation of what that looks like. And it's important for us to say that very, very well because we take the old, we take the new, we put it together and we create an authenticity that really cannot be replicated any place in the world because we are unique and we are special and we should celebrate that. And so as we come today, uh, I want to say that this is a $52 million restoration. A lot of folks have to put a lot of stuff in the pot to produce this gargantuan and gorgeous piece that you have with you. And it's not just renovating the old building, there's a new piece to it that allows the modern way of creating theater. And so that's a really good symbol for us. Tonight, uh, we are going to uh, witness a wonderful show by Jerry Seinfeld, who is a Class A talent, next Thursday on this very stage. We will have a gala dinner, and then we will have the grand opening with Kristen Chenoweth that will be backed up by the Louisiana Philharmonic and a lot of other exciting stuff uh, to come with us. Broadway is returning to Canal Street. It is just spectacular. We have a great lineup this year uh, coming our way. And I want to thank everybody who was behind the scenes uh, and worked on this. If you had a minute to come into this theater while it was being worked, you saw working men and women every day here having a job so that they could provide for their family. And you saw folks that were experts at what they did in every way. Thousands of jobs went into restoring this building because that's what infrastructure does. And also it is gonna create a long-term opportunity for people that actually work in the building. We also had some of the best artisans in America actually hand painting, right? According to the original designs that this team in their work found while they were renovating this theater. So all of the work that you see here was a, is, is a reincarnation of the original design and the original paintings as it lasted um, many, many years ago. Uh, the Sanger, uh, part of the revitalization of the Canal Street Corridor is really important. There's some other stuff going on. This is not the only thing that's happening. And as you think about what is occurring just in this general space, in these two square miles, you have the VA and the UMC hospitals, $2 billion coming out of the ground as we speak. That will be a state-of-the-art, knowledge-based medical health center that will be second to none in America, and it's right down the street. Of course, the Loyola Streetcar, I met with the Secretary of Transportation uh, two days ago and thanked him for the incredible work that that streetcar has spurred because it is now part of the Iberville development as well, which is immediately adjacent there to uh, the North Rampart Street, St. Claude Streetcar. As we move into the expansion, Council Member, I want you to know that I brought that to him on your behalf. Um, Choice Neighborhoods, $30.5 million in redeveloping the Iberville, and of course, all the downtown infrastructure projects. So you see the city being transformed before your eyes. And you don't have to tell people what's going to be anymore. You can now stand here and say what is. So this has been a really spectacular day for us. And I thank everybody over the years that has really thought about what it would be if we could be as good as we once were. And you have this before you today. It's a gift to the people of the city of New Orleans. Um, and I encourage you to use it, to love it, to enjoy it, uh, and to begin to plan for our 300th anniversary and this being one of the anchors of it. So God bless you all and thank you very much. And now I'd like to call on Mr. David Anderson from Ace Theatrical Group, who has been an unbelievable partner uh, throughout this entire effort. And we are thrilled to be in partnership with you. Mr. David Anderson. Mayor, thanks so much. I get it what you opened with. Wow. This is unbelievable. Um, our, my partners, our ACF group, have been involved, have been owners of the Sanger since the early 80s. The second most significant part of my career was the day almost two years ago where we donated it to the Canal Street Building Corporation of the city. This is the first, the most exciting. It's emotional, it's exciting, it's so proud. I can't help it. Um, they only gave me 45 minutes to speak, so let me start <laughs> talking about so many people to thank and so many people to recognize. Initially, on both sides of me, Mayor, unbelievable support you've had from the very beginning. The Council, the Canal Street Development Corporation, impossible to do this. I've done public-private partnerships all over the country. We've never had public partners like this. The state of Louisiana stepped up. The city stepped up. Canal Street Development Corporation stepped up. You 
for the old board members, we've got new board members. Everybody has embraced it from the very beginning. It couldn't have happened without you. The mayor's support all the way through from, never mind the starting of it, but how about finishing it? We've had mayor and city council and city staff support with uh, Deputy Mayor Grant um, all along the way. Every time there was a little hiccup, no problem. The city stepped in and we got it done. So, unbelievable gratitude and appreciation, recognition for what you all have done. Secondly, on a more personal note, a little over 40 years ago, a businessman from Houston came to uh, New Orleans. He produced the opening of, of the Superdome. He produced the first uh, Bayou Classic football game. Ten years later, he leased the Sanger Theater with a group of businessmen to open the showplace of the South. A couple of years later, he led another group of businessmen to buy it. Fast forward through Katrina. He led our current partners in the inspiration and the belief and the confidence that we can put this together, make it happen. Without Alan Becker, none of this happens. My partner, my friend, Alan. So just back a little bit. Katrina's terrible. It drowns the vehicle. It thinks it drowns. Cindy Connick was on our doorstep in Houston within months of the storm, looking for ways to find a way to bring it back, looking for partnerships, looking for solutions. Um, the city and this council and everybody again, starting with, with that first visit from Cindy. Um, we happen to have in New Orleans the greatest tax credit lawyer in the country, in Gary Elkins. Gary helped us put together the structure of how to make this thing happen, how to take the money that the, that the city contributed, the $15 million of disaster refund that came through the state into the city, into Canal Street, to put it together. But Gary's going to help us build it up to the $52 million project that you have together. Gary, we couldn't have done it without you. Um, so we have the structure, now we've got to find money. This was a project that was of national import. We ended up with $14 million from the National Trust for Historic Preservation to recognize the importance of rebuilding the Sanger in downtown New Orleans. Chevron, not exactly a local company. Chase Bank, not a local company. They all stepped up and invested. National companies are great and we needed them, but what kicked us over the edge, what made it possible, is the commitment from several very dedicated, very loyal, very committed New Orleans businessmen and business companies. I see the, the folks from uh, from Liberty Bank, Julius, thank you so much, all of you. Thank you so much. It couldn't have happened without you. Uh, Whitney Bank, I can't tell if, if Scott is here, but thank you for finishing for us. Local businessman George Brower, tax credit capital. He introduced us to Chevron. He put together state financing. He worked with us from the beginning to the end. Couldn't have happened without George and, and, and tax credit capital and his partner Stonehenge um, out of out of Baton Rouge. <coughs> Impossible for this to happen without all of these entities coming together. There were all, in all twelve financial partners. Twelve. I mean, public-private partnerships mean three, two, three, four, twelve different entities stepped up. I hope I haven't forgotten one of them. Forgive me if I did. Raise your hand and I'll, I'll make it up to you. So, here we are. We're done. Well, we're not done yet. We picked the greatest theater designer in the country, in Marquez and Johnson out of Washington, D.C. Gary and I have done business together for 20 years. We've got a dozen theater projects under our belts together. This is as spectacular as any more spectacular than any ones we've ever done. And it needed more work because of, of Katrina. Um, you have to build it. We went through an extensive process to find the right company to help us build it. And the financial commitment that Broadmoor made, Robert Bow, John Stewart, Joe Gio, and their entire their, their staff and their team, couldn't have done it without it. Nobody else could have done it, I'm convinced. I tell people all the time, we thought we had the best contractor in the country to do this. They, to this day, they're here. They're 
doing everything it's going to take and they've done everything it's going to take to get it done. So, team effort, everybody gets it done. We all put it together. It's a community-based project. I just can't tell you how excited we are, how proud we are. Um, I thought about something the other day when I was walking through, back from the Sanger Brothers day, the dynasties of the big movie companies through the middle of the last century, Mr. Brazil, who, who saved it and did some renovation on it, our original Sanger Theater partners who included many, many local, uh, many local folks, Pam and, and Harold Palter and the, the uh, uh, Jack Benjamin, Emily Benjamin, uh, the Boltman brothers. We had local partners and local, the unsinkable uh, Mickey Easterling. Um, so everybody stepped up and did through all of that, and now where we are in the grand reopening here. All this time, the Sanger Theater belonged to the community, to the citizens of New Orleans. Welcome back. It's yours again. We're so proud that we're here. Thank you. Thank you. Now I want to welcome up David Rubenstein, who's been the, the chairman of the Cal Street the Development Corporation. David, thank you. I think it's all been said. <laughs> um, that many lawyers you get to be there. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about the Canal Street. The Canal Street Development's mission is creating public-private partnerships of city-owned property. Our private partners include Caesars Entertainment, Lowe's Hotels, and Historic Renovations Incorporated. We are proud to have the Ace Theatrical Group as our private partner on the restoration of the Sanger Theater. Under David Anderson's leadership, ACE, working with architect Gary Martinez, and a team of talented theater experts have revitalized the historic theaters around the country. The Majestic in San Antonio, the Warner in Washington, D.C., the Boston Opera House, and now the Sanger Theater in New Orleans. Without the Beckers, Kirk Feldman, and especially David Anderson, there would be no Sanger Theater. On behalf of the Canal Street Development Board of Directors, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for your leadership and support of this project. Thank you to the Canal Street Development Board members, past and present, who worked so hard. And spe specifically, thank you to the staff of the Canal Street Development Corporation, who spent an enormous amount of time working on this project. And thank you to David Anderson and your team of talent artisans, for agreeing to become a private partners and returning the beautifully restored Sanger Theater to the citizens of New Orleans. We look forward to a long and prosperous relationship. And the one thing I want to say personally is I'm so glad to welcome our old neighbor back to Canal Street. It really makes me proud. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Now I want to, I want to call up um, the governor's representative. Governor Gino's administration has been spectacular uh, in the work that we have done, not only in rebuilding this theater, but in rebuilding what we all have affectionately uh, become to know as the cultural economy. Uh, and so Chris Daly and his entire team on the tax credits are here. Scott Hutchinson, who works for me now, used to be the uh, undersecretary for uh, cultural affairs for the state of Louisiana, has been working on this project from the beginning as well. And I want to thank all of you. Uh, but particularly, I want to thank Governor Jindal and his team and Christy for the work that you guys have done. So if you can, guys can help me welcome Christy Nichols, who's our commissioner. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to, uh, to thank you for having me. And on behalf of the governor, we just uh, congratulate all of you here and congratulate the city of New Orleans. This is beautiful. It's truly fantastic. It's fantastic to be here to be able to celebrate this with you and truly a tremendous accomplishment for this city and for this state. And so we are so pleased and so honored to be part of this. Um, I, I want to start by just congratulating uh, the mayor um, on his efforts um, in this endeavor and to, to recognize um, the, the legislative leadership that we have here today and thank them for all of the work that we do together every day and specifically your commitment to the city and the state in this particular project. We work together every day and it's hard work in Baton Rouge, but it's days like today we get to come and really see the fruits of, of, of our collective labor as a state where you really um, get to celebrate and feel good um, and, and proud about 
being a citizen of the state of Louisiana, and today is one of those days. I'd also like to certainly recognize the members on the stage and those of you that are here that have worked on this project, both the city council, the board of directors, and all of those of you that contributed to this project. Thank you, and I just congratulate you and your accomplishments. I just want to make a few remarks about the uniqueness of this project um, from the state, state's perspective and from the city's perspective, I'm sure. And it was referenced earlier, and that's just the uniqueness of what it took to get us here today in terms of moving this project forward. We all understood and, and lived through the devastation of Katrina, um, and, and certainly that was uh, truly difficult for all of us to move through. But the partnerships that were forged after Katrina and uh, the the ability and the resiliency of our state and our state leaders and our citizens has truly been tremendous. And this particular project is really a great example of that through the mayor's leadership. And, and I just want to say that your mayor has done such a fantastic job of moving the city forward and revitalizing the city. If you've had the pleasure of working with or for the mayor or with or for the governor, you know one thing about both of these gentlemen, and that is that if they want to get a job done, they make sure they get it done. And we're, we're always working behind the scenes to make sure we meet their expectations, but it's their leadership that really makes stuff like this happen. Uh, but this project in particular is unique in that we were able to put together a financing package that really leveraged all of the public-private partnerships that were mentioned here today. Uh, the uniqueness is that uh, through the city and the state's community development block grant funds, we were able to secure new market tax credits in the first relationship of its kind um, by using community development block grants to secure those new market tax credits in partnership with Canal Street Development Corporation. And, and that was just an example of what is, I think, not often seen in government or certainly not seen in government enough, and that's being nimble enough and creative enough to sit down at the table with partners you may not work with every day with a common goal for the good of the state of Louisiana and for the good of the city. And with that, that hard work, and with the work of many state agencies, including economic development, including our office through the Office of Community Development, the city's office, the Canal Street Development Corporation, the board here at the Sanger, and many, many others, we were able to leverage uh, $15 million in those community development block grants for the tax credits that ultimately were able to finance um, through the other donations of the private partners that were mentioned, um, enough funding to, to do what we have here today with us, and that is this beautiful building and this beautiful accomplishment for the city. So I just want to recognize uh, the work of those state employees, specifically Pat Forbes and his team at the Office of Community Development. I know he's been working extensively since Katrina on this project and works very well. Um, with the mayor's office on a daily basis working to re revitalize the city and so that's a great partnership. The staff of the Louisiana Economic Development Office is here today under Christelli's leadership. Thank you so much for your work, um, certainly the work of the mayor's staff and all of uh, you that have participated in this project. I just thank you for allowing us to be part of this. I'm so proud of the work that we've done as a city and as a state and I'm just so, so happy for the city of New Orleans. So thank you very much. Christy, thank you so much. It really is, as we talk about how New Orleans got rebuilt, to, to stay focused not just on the thing that we're building, but the way. And so, in order to have a cultural economy um, that produces 78,000 jobs relating to tourism, and across the state, 144,000 jobs, there's got to be not only the construction of buildings, but you have to fill it up with offerings. And that doesn't come by itself on its own. So the state of Louisiana, in its wisdom, has really pushed really hard on film tax credits. That is why the state of Louisiana right now, and the city of New Orleans, is the largest producer of major motion pictures in America, only behind Los Angeles and New York. And because of the work of the legislators and the council members, we have an originating tax credit for Broadway productions as well, because in order for this thing to work, these seats have to be full, and the productions have to be great. And so both of those pieces coming together over time are critically important. As Christy said, that would not be possible. And I want to call them all by name that I guess. Senator Ed Murray, Senator J.P. Morrell, Walt Leger, Jeff Arnold, Helena Moreno, uh, Ray Garofalo, and Jared Grosset are with us today who have really worked hard to make sure that those financial incentives are in place so that when economic development goes out and does their work, they actually have something to go work with. So when Chris goes to Los Angeles or when he goes to New York, at the end of the day, art and music is about jobs. 
It's about business, it's about producing revenue, and it's about producing a greater value. And those economic incentives um, should not be uh, thought of as anything other than one of the best tools that we have. And of course, uh, the council members who are here with us today, James Gray, Cynthia um, Hedge Morrell, Stacy Hedge, Jackie Clarkson, and of course, Kristen Palmer, both of whom um, will speak to us today. Jackie is the president of the council, and Chris gives us in form of this as our district. So I'd like to call up Jackie first, and then Kristen second, if you might. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you all, and it's all been said, except thanks for the memories. To some of us, I was here on my fifth birthday before World War II. Hmm. I still remember it like it was yesterday. And that's why I think this is the greatest comeback of all that the mayor has led us through in the last three and three quarters years or three and a half years. This is the greatest because it's so generational. Everybody still alive in this city of any age, living anywhere in the metropolitan, perhaps all of Louisiana and around the country, still remember the first time they walked into this gorgeous theater. Having been in the greatest of theaters in Washington, D.C., New York, and L.A., yes, Mr. Mayor, it is the absolute best in the country. And you've brought it back to be the best. We as a team have been proud to be part of you, all that have been mentioned. And we're proud because it is so generational, because it reaches so many people that have a memory here. Everybody that's ever been in this building will remember the time they had here, especially the first time. And I want to thank David Anderson and Alan Becker that I was privileged to meet the further they bought this building. And what wasn't mentioned is when our symphony collapsed over at the Orpheum, our gorgeous Louisiana Philharmonic now, they housed them here at the Sanger until we could rebuild the best orchestra in the country, owned by our musicians. Many a tale has been woven and told in this, in this venture, in this edifice, and it shall continue, and it shall continue to make us the greatest city in America. Thank you. Good morning. Wow. Uh, I think I'm just sitting here looking, and I think, Jack, you're absolutely right. We all sit here and remember when we first came to this place. I remember coming here with my sisters and my father watching Casablanca here. And then I also remember the last time I was here, which was on scaffolding, and being able to look at the top and, and touch the top and the, and the ceiling and the beautiful imagining when the stars come back on. And you know, when, you, when we think about how it got here, it also started for me to think about scaffolding, the many different pieces that make it all fit together. And uh, being in construction, I always try to go back to that. And that's really what this has been about, and especially when we talk about the success of a public-private partnership, because this really has been the epitome of that. You know, it's all these different pieces and parts that strengthen the entire theater in this, in this particular case. Um, and if it really wasn't for, I'm just going to call you all the Davids, it's been remarkable, because not only is it my distinct privilege and honor to represent this incredible district, I also sit on the Canal Street Development Corporation. And to watch since I've been in office, um, these wonderful pieces coming together and the diligence of that and David Anderson, you know, the professionalism that you have brought and the expertise and then David Rubenstein with your wonderful um, sense of civic engagement and civic pride and also coming from the business world and all for the good of the public and that is something that we always can't remember. We always throw out words like public-private partnership. You know, and, and we have to remember that this is what is created by it. And the beauty of this project, too, is that, and I hope it doesn't get lost in, in all these um, speeches, is that it was donated back to the city of New Orleans. And we finally have a place that is so reflective. I was just talking to a gentleman in the back of the house, and we were saying, he was like, it's like an assault on our senses. And I was like, yeah, so it's the city of New Orleans. It's exactly what we are. And this is who we represent. And we finally have our place again that represents us as a people. And I think that's wonderful. And, and you know, it really has become symbolic of how we're coming back to this city. We're building smarter, we're building more beautiful, we're building in a more inclusive nature, and that's not gonna change. And I do just want to specifically shout out to Cindy Connie. Cindy. She's a true public servant. 
you know, and, and she, it just is remarkable, her tenacity and her honesty and her intent on making sure that every dollar is for the public good and that it is spent wisely. And I really would love her to be the leader on so many of our uh, public benefit corporations that we have out here. But this one, I'm sorry? Yeah, I'm sorry. And, and so it really is so important. And again, thank you, Cindy, for your leadership and showing us all how to do this the right way and how to do it in a way that's thoughtful and that we can always ensure it's within the public realm and that it is something that's absolutely reflective of all of us as a people. So again, thank you all. Thank you for your collective efforts. And we've built a very fine scaffolding that holds a beautiful building. Thank you. I'm sorry for that. For that. That comment, but what I was going to say is she is. She is now becoming the point person on all of that. So, um, I, I want to I want to call up Lauren um, Reed from Broadway Across America. But before she comes up, um, she needs to understand, as do all of the other folks that in the theatrical business, that this is just the beginning. This is not the end. Um, when New Orleans is will be in full blossom, you will see a city that in many, many ways, has a theater scene, a live music scene, an art scene, that is very much like the best in the world. So whether we're talking about the Avon Theater uh, and the work that they do at the West End in London, all the work that they do in Los Angeles, Steppenwolf uh, in Chicago, when you think about all of the Broadway and off-Broadway stuff that's going on in New York, I don't know how many theaters they have there, but they have a lot. And so as all of ours got beat to death with the resurrection just recently of Booker T, of Mahalia Jackson being in play, with Lowe's across the street, with the Orpheum potentially in play, the city of New Orleans is just beginning her renaissance as it relates to art, music, and culture. In order to do that, you have to grow it from the ground up. And so music and art in all of our schools is critically important. Of course, NOCA is second to none. You have the best performing arts high school in America in your city, and we have a great opportunity. And Lauren represents Broadway across America, and of course, is the engine in which all of these wonderful actors and musicians and artists perform. And I can assure you that they will come into this theater and once they're here, they are always going to want to come back. And so we want you to be a part of New Orleans. We want you to see us as part of your home and not just a place where you go from time to time, but where you think of us as one of your um, integral partners as we produce this wonderful thing for the people of the United States of America. So Lauren, thank you so much for being here. And if you would come up and give us some words out there. It is a breathtaking, so bravo, bravo to all of you. I am Lauren Reed, the president of Broadway Across America. Broadway Across America, as the mayor said, is a leading producer and the foremost presenter of first-class touring productions. We operate in 43 cities, one of which is New Orleans. And on behalf of my company, I'm honored to join you, Mayor Landry, the Canal Street Development Corporation, and the dedicated staff of AC Theatrical Group. Today, marks a new chapter for live entertainment in New Orleans, a city truly passionate about the arts. I serve on the Board of Governors for the Broadway League in New York, and I can tell you that the producers and my colleagues and the entire New York theater community know about this project, and we are excited that Broadway is back at the Sanger Theater. This completely restored theater and state-of-the-art stage house rivals the best theaters in New York, you're right, and across the country. The city is already universally known for its food and its culture and its entertainment. You attract visitors across the world, and now it's truly a destination for Broadway's best. I'm especially proud to share with you that New Orleans, and this is a secret we haven't shared, happy to say, has the largest one-week season subscription base of all of our cities. It is an incredible feat and highlights the appetite for Broadway's best right here in the Crescent City. We thank you and the entire community for your support. Broadway in New Orleans at the Sanger Theater will present seven hit shows this season. The first of which is October 15th and kicks off with the Book of Mormon and nine-time Tony Award winner. Other highlights include Ghost the Musical and Sister Act, both movies and direct from Broadway Productions in New York just last season. 
We're also bringing Disney's Beauty and the Beast and the Tony Award winner for Best Musical, Memphis. And finally, we're going to bring the most extraordinary and I think also breathtaking play which belongs in this theater. It's called War Horse. I can't think of a more exciting season to match this theater and the much anticipated opening of the Sanger Theater. Again, thank you, Mayor Landry, Cindy Connick, and this Canal Street Development Corporation and a theatrical group for your leadership your, and the redevelopment of this theater. And thank you to New Orleans Theater Association for your continued partnership and support of Broadway in New Orleans. We salute you all for your commitment to live theater and invite you to join us to experience Broadway's best on Canal Street in the Crescent City. Thank you. Well, let me, let me just wrap up this event. We're going to cut the ribbon in a second by just reiterating the incredible thanks uh, to everybody that here. And I really do want you to take a minute and just take in the magnificence of the moment because this is what success, this is what winning, this is what being the best feels like. And you know what? It feels really, really good. And we want more of it. And I have said this many times, this city, because of all of y'all's work, has become this nation's most immediate laboratory for innovation and change. And we, we are showing the rest of America how in very, very difficult times, as the nation is talking about breaking debt limits, when they're talking about austerity, when they're talking about not having money, what it looks like to be able to succeed when everybody gets together and works towards a common purpose and a common goal. We have found the way. It's public-private, it's faith-based, it's federal, state, local, it's everybody in pushing in one direction, and as I've said, one team, one fight, one voice, one city, and this is the best example that we have for the rest of America. So God bless all of you, thank you for coming. And I'd just like to invite the folks up on the desk to join me and we're gonna cut this ribbon and um, start to play the music. Thank you.